Hello everybody, Elder Janae here, and I'm excited to be able to be with you for another class for our series entitled Fit for Life, The Power of Spiritual Disciplines. If you have been with us over the past nine weeks, then you know that we've been diving into the spiritual disciplines and how they really enable us to get through life's challenges and just make us stronger as Christians um, in general. And so this is actually my last teaching with you all in this way. You'll still see me in the post-teaching conversations, but this is the last time that I'll be teaching with you. And so I'm glad that I've been able to journey with you all through this time together. I pray that our time together has been fruitful and that you've learned and grown over the past nine weeks. And so we're going to start off with the word of prayer and we're going to jump right into this lesson. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. We ask that you would be with us, that you would open our ears, open our hearts, that we would receive everything that you would have to say to us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So tonight we are talking about the spiritual discipline of counsel. For the purpose of this Bible study, we are calling it counsel, but if you look elsewhere, you'll see this discipline as guidance. Uh, but again, for the purposes of this class, we are calling it counsel. And so to start off, I wanna ask you a question. I would love for you to answer this in the chat. Um, are you one who seeks counsel? Is it easy for you to receive counsel? Why or why not? I am a type of person, if I can share my answer, I do seek counsel. It's important for me to be able to listen to other people, wise people who know the word, who may be unbiased, who may have had experience in my area, or if they don't have experience in the area that I'm looking for counseling in, they're just experienced with the Lord. And so I am one who seeks counsel. And sometimes, depending on what the counsel is, I receive it easier, uh, other parts other than others. But um, I am one who, who enjoys receiving counsel. And I believe that it's a benefit to all who are believers um, and just look to people for that type of guidance. And so let's talk a little bit about what counsel is and specifically what the spiritual discipline of counsel is. The spiritual discipline of counsel involves seeking and providing wise guidance in according with spiritual principles. It emphasizes the importance of seeking wisdom from trusted individuals and offering support to others on their spiritual journey. And so this lesson, there are two sides to this if we talk about counseling, right? There's one who gives counsel and one who receives counsel. The majority of this lesson will be based off of one who is receiving counsel. Ultimately, counsel aims to foster spiritual growth, maturity, deep connections with others, and to align one's life with spiritual values and the word of God. And so the biblical definition of counsel is opinion or instruction given upon request or otherwise for directing the judgment or conduct or, or of another. Opinion given upon deliberation or consultation. And so one of my favorite parts in this, and we'll get into it a little bit further, is that it's given upon request or otherwise. And so good counsel shows up sometimes even when you're not asking for it. Good counsel is not always asking for permission. It's giving permission when you see that someone is going the wrong way. One of the most important components that we see is that counsel does not aim to merely provide an answer, right? If you look and listen back to the definition that I gave, um, it is about deliberation, consultation. The point of counsel is not to tell someone always what they should or shouldn't do unless they are in imminent danger. But often counsel involves providing a space for someone to think through things, pray through things, go to the word, go to God, right? It's about setting people up so that they arrive to an answer that ultimately pleases the Lord. And so counsel does not strong arm you into a decision, right? This is important because counsel echoes the free will that we are given um, by God, right? And so a counselor, someone who is counseling you is not here to make you do anything, right? They're there to point you in a direction, set you up so that you can think through, pray through and make wise decisions. And so since we know what wise counsel is, let's talk about what it is not. Because wise counsel offers insight, discernment, instruction, knowledge, wise counsel is not arrogant, it is not self-pleasing, and it is not people-pleasing. I'll say that again, wise counsel is not arrogant, self-pleasing, or people-pleasing. We should not seek counsel for an answer that we find favorable. But counsel is given to provide insight, 
so that you can make a decision that pleases God. And so if you are someone who is seeking counsel, you should not seek counsel solely to get a yes or for someone to be a yes man to you. You should come knowing that someone may not tell you what's favorable, but it may not be favorable, but it is wise. And so now that we've laid the groundwork and we know what counsel is, what it's not, I want to talk about three things that are necessary in order to have a space where counsel can be received well. And so the first thing that we need is honesty. Honesty is essential for biblical counsel because it lays the foundation for genuine and effective communication. It builds a pathway for transformation, for confession, for repentance if needed. In the context of biblical counsel, it allows individuals to openly talk, openly share, openly dialogue about things that need to be addressed. They can talk about their struggles, their weaknesses, areas of need, areas of success, and that enables the counselor to provide an accurate assessment of where they may need support, where they need guidance and encouragement. This sounds a lot like James 5 and 16 that says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And Galatians 6 and 2 says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If we want someone to help our burdens, we have to be honest about them. We have to be truthful about them, and we have to be willing to be able to address them head on. Without honesty, what we can see is that people will withhold information. They will keep to themselves things that need to be talked about, things that need to be addressed. They may misrepresent their circumstances. They may deceive others. They may deceive themselves. And what they're really doing is hindering the effectiveness of counsel. Honesty is also crucial for addressing sin and wrongdoing. If someone that's counseling you doesn't know about the sin that you're dealing with, they cannot address it biblically, right? They cannot call it out. They cannot help you through if there's a process that needs to be walked through. Confession and repentance are integral parts of receiving biblical counsel and experiencing restoration and healing. You need honesty. And so the second thing that you need in terms of biblical counseling, after you go from honesty, is you need submission. And so submission, uh, we've done this in previous classes, submission is actually a discipline by itself, but for the purposes of this study, we wanted to include it in counsel because the two are so interlinked. Submission, the definition is to yield one's opinion to the opinion or authority of another. To yield one's opinion to the opinion or authority of another. The Bible teaches submission in various contexts, including submission to God, authority figures, and one another. Ephesians 5 and 21 tells us to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submission is necessary for counsel because it creates an environment of trust, respect, and humility. And these are essential for effective communication and guidance. When individuals submit themselves to counsel, they acknowledge the wisdom, the experience, the time with God, uh, the biblical knowledge, maybe even the professional experience that a person may have in the area of counsel. It makes it easier to receive that guidance, easier to receive that direction and correction. And submission allows the counselor to provide insight, advice, and correction in a constructive manner. If you have ever talked to someone who you don't believe is listening to you or who is disregarding who you are, you know in that situation you almost don't want to keep going with them. It's almost like the wall is preventing them, not from what you know, but it's preventing you from giving them what you know. You know what you know, but it's much easier to give it when someone is submitted to and open to that area. You cannot have effective counsel without submission you will find yourself going from person to person, session to session, looking for another answer because you didn't submit the first time. I'm gonna say that again. You will find yourself going from person to person, session to session, because you didn't submit to the answer the first time. The last thing that is required for 
good and wise counsel to be received. We talked about honesty. We talked about submission. And the last thing is accountability. It's probably not the last thing. There are more. This is not an exhaustive list. Uh, Before our time together, these are the, the three. Accountability is necessary for biblical counsel because it provides a framework for growth, encouragement, and support and following God's principles and commands. In the context of biblical counsel, accountability helps people stay true to God's word, to his standards, to what he says, to what pleases him. And it gives a chance for honesty, transparency, and vulnerability to thrive. It creates a safe space for individuals to share their struggles, receive guidance, and to be able to grow and to be held to a certain standard if they are not growing. Accountability is important because it helps guard against pride, self-deception, and falling into sin because it provides checks and balances within the Christian community. It encourages mutual edification. And it also allows the person being counseled not to believe that they're being held to a standard other than God's. You're not being held to your personal counselor's standard. You're not being held to your mother's standard, your father's standard, your own standard. With true accountability in the word, you are held to the word of God. And so we've talked about those three, right? Honesty, submission, and accountability. They are necessary. Um, But Bible intake, prayer, faith, stewarding the word, right? All of those are necessary. And so even all of the, the disciplines that we've talked about so far, they go into being able to receive counsel in a way that's beneficial. And so I, we've talked about those, and I want to move on to where we can get counsel, right? We've talked about what counsel is, what we need to receive counsel. And so now I want to talk about where we can receive counsel. The first way that we can receive counsel is through the scriptures. I'm sure you saw that one coming, right? James 1 and 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, Let him ask God, who gives generously to all, without reproach, and it will be given him. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is a very popular scripture. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. We talked about the spiritual discipline of Bible study in week five and its importance in the life of the believer. And here is where we see how those disciplines connect, right? When we really engage in scriptures, when we really engage in the word of God, we find counsel in them. Proverbs is a really great book in terms of counseling and finding truth and accountability and wisdom in the scriptures. The whole book is, but Proverbs is is notorious for that. We find in the scriptures the ability to be counseled in and through the word of God. So the first way we receive counsel is through the word of God. The second way that we can receive counsel is directly from the Holy Spirit. In John 14, verse 26, Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. For us, all that... I have said to you that Jesus is referencing here is the word of God. And so this, again, is why we need to engage in the word, because the Holy Spirit is bringing back to our remembrance the word of God. The Holy Spirit is not bringing back to remembrance our thoughts, our desires, our wishes. He is bringing to us the very word of God. And so coupling the word of God with the Holy Spirit is a way that we are able to be counseled in and through the word. So, of course, you want to pray, right? You want to make sure that your prayer life is growing and that you're praying about the counsel that you receive. And that's why it's important to be able to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that as you're praying, he's able to show you and reveal to you the ways in which you need to apply his counsel to your life. The last way that we can receive counsel is, of course, through people. God's plans always includes using other people in our lives. And it includes that we would ask people and seek them in a way that honors him and in a way that he can show his goodness and his wisdom through them to us. Of course, we should always, 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 even if you are with the best counselor, check the counsel that you are receiving with the word of God and with the Holy Spirit. But Proverbs 11 and 14 says, where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. 
And so here's the thing, right? We can not do things accurately, and we can never fully understand all there is to understand. No one person will ever understand all there is to understand about the word, about life, about you, about your circumstances that you're going through. But we still need the perspectives of other people. We still need the wisdom of other people. We still need the experience of other people to help us through what we're facing. Others who are wise, experienced, and discerning provide what we cannot provide for ourselves. And the reason why God would have us to seek counsel from other people is because he's put the answer in other people. I want to go to this in the Bible, right? I don't want you to think I'm just talking. Um, so I want to go to Exodus 18, verses 13 to 24. And it says, the next day Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me and I decide between one and another, and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, what you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for this thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. Now obey my voice. I will give you advice, and God be with you. You shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God, and you shall warn them about the statutes and the laws and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do. Moreover, look for able men from all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy, and hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs in thousands of hundreds of fifties and of tens, and let them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you, but any small matter they shall decide themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, God will direct you, so you will be able to endure, and all this people will also go to their place in peace. So Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And so in this passage of scripture, we see that Moses is working hard, being a leader over the children of Israel. He is helping them get through certain matters for a very long time. And his father-in-law comes and sees what he is doing and says, this is insane. You're going to wear yourself out. And so he gives him a system to put in place so that Moses is not doing all the work, but he enlists other people to help him to be able to meet the needs of the people while not burning out. And so... This is a key example of all that we've talked about already, right? Here comes Moses. He's a leader. He is in the place that he should be. But it took an outside source for him to see that what he was doing wasn't working and counsel to be able to get him through into the place that he needed to be. And so there are a few things that I want to point out about this and why this is so important, right? The first thing is that Moses was a leader, but he did not think of himself as such a great leader that he could not receive wisdom from someone else. He was already in a position where God had appointed him, God had chosen him, he had been leading them for a very long time, but he still was in a position of humility to be able to receive counsel from someone else. This is the humility factor that we talked about earlier, right? You have to be humble in order to receive counsel. And Moses' position did not exclude him from the humility necessary to receive counsel from an outside source. The second thing that we see here, and it kind of connects to the first one, is that we don't really see in scripture that a Jethro has experience leading people the way that he is telling Moses to lead. There is no resume that says Jethro even has the right, if you will, to counsel him in this way because he may not have experienced it. But that's not always the criteria for us to receive counsel. Um, if there is someone who's at a certain point in their life, they may not have children or be married or have a certain amount of money. That does not mean that they cannot counsel you on how to raise your family, how to you know, seek God in being married or how to get a certain amount of money. Experience is helpful, but wisdom from God and from the Holy Spirit will trump experience every single time. 
And so I want to say, don't despise a counselor that may not have the experience that you're looking for, right? There could be some specific wisdom that God has given to them for what you need, and it may not be the package that you're thinking of, but they could be exactly what you need. And the last thing that we see about this interaction that is probably my favorite is that Moses didn't ask Jethro for his opinion. Jethro just gave it to him. And earlier in the chapter, um, it talks about how Moses and Jethro, they see one another. It's a very friendly exchange. Like, Jethro didn't come there to assess Moses' leadership skills. He didn't come there to see how he was doing. He came to really enjoy some time with him. But as he was there, he offered his counsel, his insight, his wisdom, and it was helpful to him, right? Um, I want to say this, especially to us that, that belong to churches, that belong to a body, right? Um, we have to understand that when you sign up to be a part of a body, you sign up for accountability. If you sign up to be a part of a body, you sign up for accountability. And that accountability is not always the type that you want. Sometimes accountability is in your face. Sometimes accountability is completely not what you're asking for or looking for. But real account accountability, sometimes it doesn't ask for permission. It doesn't ask for your preferences. But accountability by the word of God and by the examples that we see in the word is in your face. Luke 17 and 13 says, pay attention to yourselves. If a brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. The scripture does not say, if your brother sins, ask him if it's okay to rebuke him. It does not say, if your brother sins, look for the right time to rebuke him. It says rebuke him. Now, of course, there's a way that we do that in love. And depending on your position in a ministry, you want to use wisdom and, and knowledge and proper judgment on how you do that. But the Bible does not tell us to go by people's comfortability levels. It tells us to just do, to act. But I want to say this, the key to keep ourselves open to relationships like Moses and Jethro, um, of course they had a family relationship, so there's something there, but the key to keeping ourselves open to um, counsel at any moment is to be open, right? We have to make ourselves known by other people and we have to know those that labor among us. And so if we are looking to be in a space where we want accountability, we have to make ourselves open to that. We have to make ourselves open to receive that and to know that if it does come, it is for our good. And so the last thing that I wanna talk about um, today is we've talked about what wise counsel is, what it's not, how we can receive counsel, what you need to receive counsel. I want to give you some tips to regularly implement the spiritual discipline of counsel in your life. I want to give you some ways that you can not just hear counsel and it feel good to you, or maybe you don't like it and it feels bad, but how you can implement it in your life. The first thing that you want to do is pray for wisdom and discernment. Pray for wisdom and discernment. Pray for wisdom for yourself. Primarily, pray for it for yourself, like we talked about that scripture in James. If you lack wisdom, ask God, right? Pray for wisdom for yourself. Pray for wisdom for others as they interact with you, that they would always give you the unadulterated word of God, that they would know the word of God, and that they would not be ashamed to tell you the word of God, right? And then you also want to pray for discernment on how to apply that wisdom, right? It doesn't make sense to have wisdom but not have the ability to apply it in your life. And so you want to pray for wisdom, and you want to be able to have discernment to be able to use that wisdom. The second thing that I want you to do is recognize blocks to receiving wisdom and counsel. Recognize blocks to receiving wisdom and counsel. The truth is, as people, we can struggle with fear, with doubt, with pride, with people-pleasing, with our desires, we can struggle with so many things, but we have to ask God to help us deal with any blocks that will keep us from receiving wise counsel. We have to constantly, even when we think we've conquered a thing, we have to constantly bring ourselves to the place where we're asking God, is there something in me that wouldn't receive? Am I not submitted enough? Am I not humble enough? Have I not been honest enough? We've got to know those blocks and be able to pray through those blocks. And if you don't know it, ask the Lord, and he will reveal it to you so that you can get through it. The last thing that I want you to do to be able to implement counsel in your daily life is to respond even when you are feeling unsure and afraid. 
respond even when you are feeling unsure and afraid. As tempting as it is, we are not on a point A to point B path with God. That is just not how it goes. It is not linear. Everything is not laid out for us perfectly without hiccups. Um, there are turns, there are changes in directions. And as much as we may want a simple, singular answer to the problems that we're facing, that's just not how it is. We talked about it earlier, right? How counsel helps us to arrive to a decision, but it does not always give us the choice that we should make, right? And so no list, including everything I've talked about today, is complete with everything, with perfect outcomes, with the perfect you know, plan for everything. Nothing is complete like that, right? But what you wanna do is respond in faith when you're receiving counsel, even when it's hard, right? You may get to receive counsel from someone and you feel like that didn't help at all. I still don't know what to do. But if they may have given you tools and scriptures to read, maybe they've given you um, an action item to complete, it may not seem like it's worth it, but respond even when you're unsure and when you're afraid. There is something that happens when we trust God, when we take him at his word, and we use the principles and the tools that he's left us to be able to get through life. And so I want to conclude with this, right? I would be a terrible teacher if I did not mention this, that one of the ways that Jesus is described in scripture is as a wonderful counselor. The prophet Isaiah could have called him many things, and they do, the prophets do throughout the Old Testament, right? But in this particular scripture, he could have called him a mighty healer, a great deliverer, a strong warrior. But he chose to identify him in Isaiah 9 and 6 as a wonderful counselor. And this is a beautiful truth for believers because it's a reminder that the Lord is able to advise his people thoroughly because he is qualified in ways no human counselor is. Colossians 2 and 3 says Christ is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. This includes knowledge of all human nature. Jesus Christ knows everything there is to know. He knows everything about your situation, everything about the situations to come, everything about the situations that have passed. He knows exactly how to deal with it, and that's what makes him the wonderful counselor. As we lean on him and as we lean on the resources that he's given us through people, through his word, through the Holy Spirit, we are able to navigate through life's difficulties. And so I want you to take that with you, that Jesus has all of the answers that you need. He may not give them all to you at once, but he's given you ways to get to those answers through his word, through his people, through his Holy Spirit. And so that's our time together. I pray that the next time that you receive counsel from someone, you remember that this is God's goodness and his love towards you, that he would put your answer in another person, and he would put another person in your path to remind you again that you can make it through this life. You can make it through the life's challenges if you lean on his word and you lean on the resources that he's left you and people. I love y'all, and I pray that you will stick around for our conversation that's coming up where we get to answer some questions about counsel and its effect in our lives. Stay tuned for the conversation. We are back with our post-teaching conversation about counsel. I hope that you enjoyed that lesson. Um, and so I'm here with Brianna. You have seen her teaching and you've seen her in the conversation. And we have Minister Kelly who is here with us today. Uh, she is one of the ministers here and one of the teachers. Uh, if you've been in person, then you've seen her teaching in person for our Fit for Life Bible study series. And so we're glad that you're here today to share with us um, as we have this conversation about counsel um, and its importance in our lives, the life of the body, and how it shows up. And so I'm going to start this. Well, I already answered this, so I don't think I have the answer. Um, are you one who seeks counsel? Either one of you can answer. Is it easy for you to receive it? Why or why not? I answered mine in the lesson, so go back if you want to see it. But to you two, are you one who seeks counsel? Is it easy for you to receive? Why or why not? I definitely do seek counsel. Mm -hmm. um, I love counsel. Uh, I do believe it's usually easy for me to uh -huh. receive it. Mm -hmm. There has been some tough ones, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with yeah. you, where you know I had to go back and sit 
yeah. my head down mm-hmm. and process. Yeah. Um, but even in those moments, uh, I think I'm able to say, okay, there's a point to all of this, mm-hmm. and I'm always over. I'm always able, obviously with the help of God, mm-hmm. to just get over my feelings yeah. and say, all right, God is trying to do something, and I don't want to miss it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, very similar. I love counsel, um, but I wasn't always like that mm-hmm. because I think just growing up, I was a very intellectual being. Mm-hmm. So I relied heavily on my own problem solving skills yeah. or my own rationales. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll figure it out. But then as I grew older, ran into different problems, different demon, you know, stuff, <laughs> yeah. um, there were certain things that I couldn't face on my own. Mm-hmm. So I willingly, resorted to yeah. counsel. Yeah. Um, I Now it's something that I love, and I know we're, I'm going to get too far, mm-hmm. but um, to a fault, right? Because you don't want to start relying more on human counsel than God's yeah. actual wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's something that's fairly easy for me. There's always a blind spot, something that I can't yes. see mm-hmm. that someone else can pick up, mm-hmm. um, whether it's positive or negative, right? Yeah. Like, counsel is not always negative or something that you need to correct, but yeah. counsel could also be a encouraging like mm-hmm. someone just telling you what they see and how to motivate you to keep going so yeah. yes. on both ends i i i love counsel yeah okay those were good i'll <laughs> share my answer again um i'm not a little similar to you it's like mm-hmm. i well i guess both i do enjoy counsel when it gets rough it gets rough for me <laughs> um mm-hmm. so sometimes it's like wow wasn't expecting that right, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe i was and i'm sad was like i knew you yeah, uh-huh. yeah, like, like you know what's coming that. so it's like yeah. dang i knew what's gonna happen yeah um but yes council council is uh on the top of my list yes um can you and i'll start with you brianna can you mm-hmm. share a personal experience where seeking or offering counsel played a significant role in your spiritual growth so some of that time will seeking or receiving counsel played a significant role in your spirit side. Right. <laughs> you okay? Because no, like no, not no, no. <laughs> like it's very recent. Like in the last year, mm-hmm. um, as just my life is evolving and I'm elevating and coming into new responsibilities and roles. If it wasn't for counsel, mm-hmm. mm-mm. Because sometimes it's just, how do I do this? How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to navigate through this? So personally, if I go to either um, my close friend group, right, and I just ask, like, how does this work? Have you ever experienced this before? Mm -hmm. They'll say no, but (laughs) they're still able to pour something in me that helps. So personally, it's very recent. Within the last year, just asking them, how how do I do this? And it's always, I don't know. Again, I don't want to get too far ahead, mm-hmm. but it's always biblically sound. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always reinforcing um, God's word, God's wisdom, and God's plan over my life. Yeah. So I don't believe that without counsel, I would have um, the confidence to even take the risk to mm. grow, mm-hmm. right? Like, I feel like a lot of my evolution and growth in the body of Christ came through counsel mm-hmm. and people just speaking to me about yeah, who good. God says that I am. Mm-hmm. That's so good. That's yeah. personal. Can I pick it back? Um, I think another, I don't hope, hopefully I'm not going on a tangent, Mm -hmm. but I think another beautiful thing to that point, Mm -hmm. when you say, you know, you will go to your friends and ask them, um, have they, have they been through this? And they would say no. Um, I think that's the beautiful thing about counsel. I don't need to Mm -hmm. have gone through Mm -hmm. every specific Mm -hmm. thing, uh, you Mm -hmm. know? So if you can't find someone who's been in your type of mess, Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's okay because the work covers it all, right? Right. So just because I'm not married doesn't mean that I can't be there for a married Mm -hmm. person and give sound advice for Mm -hmm. a married person. Just because I don't have a child doesn't mean that I can't speak to parenthood and yeah. things mm-hmm. like that because the word is the word and the word is true mm-hmm. and so if we can find it in here or if we can find the wisdom in here yes. yeah uh then i think you're good and yeah. you're on you're on a good ground absolutely so. i also i'm sorry go, go, yeah. um, go. and i think if one thing ever just discouraged me from giving counsel it was that mm. it was because i've gotten hit with like oh well you didn't go through that mm-hmm. or like you didn't you know and i know they meant well and i know right. they were just looking for a similar experience like right. if you're yeah. a mom i don't have a child yet you know so i understand that yeah. but i think in that like on both ends me as a 
as someone who is counseling and someone who is receiving counsel, yeah. like you can miss a God moment in that mm -hmm. because it still should be biblically based. So yeah. I'm not taking something off of what I imagine or what yes. I think. Like, no, this is what God says. This is, you know, like yeah. I can always refer it back. Yeah. So if anything were to discourage me at yeah. all about counsel, it was that experience piece yeah. or feeling like I didn't live enough mm -hmm. to be able to provide mm -hmm. um, sound counsel. Yeah. But I think that keeps the people mm -hmm. humble. Is that, I was, yes, I was, I was, yeah. I was thinking gonna, that. Go, yeah. go, 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 go. Because I feel like God would do it. God is, <laughs> you you expect the years to come over here. God be yeah. like, no, I'm going to put it on her. Yeah. Because <laughs> you got to humble yourself to get this work yeah. from her. Yeah. You know, um, so I think that it helps us work together as a body. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And it keeps us submitted and it keeps mm -hmm. us humble yep. yeah. mm -hmm. to, to like just being open to God, like, all right, Lord. Yeah. You know how those things you say, whatever way you bless me, I'll mm -hmm. be satisfied. Mm -hmm. That's easy to say, harder to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, no, you really do have to mean whatever way you yeah. want to yeah. speak to me, yeah. you want to bless me, mm -hmm. you yeah. want to cover me, mm -hmm. you want to support me, you want to help me, I will be satisfied with yeah. that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I love mm -hmm. that. Love that. Y'all don't said it all. Okay. So, no, it's okay. I love this. I don't got to talk much. Um, so, I'm going to give this one to you, Kelly. <laughs> Tell us about a time that you didn't receive counsel well and didn't do what mm -hmm. was advised. How did that turn out for you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at that part. I wrote it, but it's yeah. fine. Yeah. That's mm. How much time we got? <laughs> you know. So, I remember, um, I remember I was in college, mm -hmm. and I remember uh, a beloved saint. Mm -hmm. I, I had a, a moment with a beloved saint, mm -hmm. and I was just catching her up on the things that was going on, <clears throat> and under the unction of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. she so nicely and so gently told me that I basically need to repent. She didn't say that, mm -hmm. but it was like, I can, I can sense that as I'm talking, she's uneasy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't feel like she's happy for yeah. me. <laughs> I don't feel like she got a good word to say for me. Yeah. Um, and she and she basically just gave me warning mm. um, and told me that I should probably go a different direction. Mm -hmm. um, and I wind up crying mm -hmm. at the end of it. But I was crying because I was upset mm. because I felt like in college I was backslidden. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, I'm like, this is the piece of, I'm happy. Yeah. Like, let me be no, happy. Like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. parade. Yeah. On my parade. Yeah. Like, you don't want to see me happy. Yeah. And so my flesh was doing all this type of excuses mm. and all this other type of stuff. But deep mm. down within, I knew I was convicted. Mm. Mm -hmm. I knew that that was the voice of God. Yeah. I ignored it five years into that journey, wow. which could have stopped year one. Mm -hmm. Year five, I finally stopped it. Mm -hmm. But you would think it would be over year five. No, because it took year six and seven to heal mm -hmm. and yeah. to get over and wow. to and to get myself yeah. rebuilt mm -hmm. um, from going on an unnecessary experience. Yeah. If I would have just humbled myself, mm. yeah. if I would have just so listened to her, because that was the problem, right? I'm seeking happiness. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm seeking right. things that feel good, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Um, but that stuff never lasts. Mm -hmm. And when it goes, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. And you're left with the truth of mm -hmm. your decisions yeah. Um, and you're left with the mess to clean up. Yeah. And so that was that was a very humbling time, and I will never forget it because I remember what I felt mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. delivered mm -hmm. the, the yeah. word. Yeah. yeah. But I remember knowing the truth, mm -hmm. and I remember still doing it anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I paid that price. Mm -hmm. I paid the price mm -hmm. to continue going in my direction. I definitely did pay the price. Yeah. Um, but that's a lesson that I would never forget, and yeah, I hope girl. to never make it again. Yeah, that was good. That, right. That was, that was really, really, really. Yep, really nothing wow. over here. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to end the conversation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that that just really paints the picture. And I think we all can put ourselves in that position one way or another, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's five years, two years, two months, whatever it is, right? You pay the price for yeah. not listening to mm -hmm. wise counsel based in the word of God, right? right. And so I think about um, the people at Acts who they mm -hmm. withheld their money. And oh, mm. it, and so well, somebody said, was it Paul that mm. said, "Why'd you lie to the Holy Ghost?" Mm -mm. Was it Peter? Somebody said it. Somebody it's said somebody. it was yeah. one of them. It was one of them. It was it was yeah, yeah. Read, it. read it. But they were like, "Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit?" Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we despise wise counsel, we may think that we are not listening to a person, but you're really not listening but to God. the Lord, right? Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. that changes things mm -hmm. when you kind of like. 
I'm just not going to listen to Minister Kelly. But if the Lord put the word in Minister Kelly to give to me, what I'm really rejecting is the truth and the word of God. And so that really puts a different kind of weight on it when it's not just my pastor's face, but it's like God who's literally answering my problem and I'm going a different way. But then I wonder, like, is that really seeking counsel? Because, like, if there's a, mm. is there a, a vessel? Because I'm just, me personally, mm -hmm. when I really need a word, right? When I need something and I need direction, I need wisdom, mm -hmm. like, the vessel, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm mm -hmm. looking for, there's a desperation. Like, I know that there's a need and I know that God can use whomever. Yeah. Yeah. But then I'm wondering, like, if if there's a, a look or a vessel to what you're seeking, like, is that mm. really, are you really seeking counsel or are you seeking something else? Right. I think that is so multifaceted and I think it depends on the person mm -hmm. and I, so because this is what I think I think people think they want counsel until <laughs> they get <laughs> counsel <laughs> and it's like <laughs> wait a minute mm -hmm. and, like, um, mm -hmm. and so then sometimes what people, what people can do is well she don't know what she's talking about no yeah. way you know yeah um, and I talked about this in the lesson like if mm. you don't submit to the answer the first time you go from person to person that session to session Church to church, whatever you want to, whatever you want to put in there, looking yeah. for the answer that you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so, it really is a, a matter of the heart. If you really want the truth in the Word of God, yeah. I think that's yeah. the real question. But so um, I think, in terms of, in Minister Kelly's place where you mm -hmm. weren't looking for it, yes. I think that's when it's mm -hmm. e the easiest to reject yeah. it because yeah. that's like, hey, I was in my accent. Nobody asked. I was coming here for that no way, so you know, I'm not right. going to receive that. But yeah. I think even now, so, you know, I wasn't as mature then, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think now, the people listening to this, like, you have an opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when counsel comes to you, mm -hmm. when you're not seeking it, that's yeah. God's grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's God's love yeah. reaching out to you and yeah. say, hey, I see that cliff you're about to walk mm -hmm. toward. Mm -hmm. You should probably go this way. Yeah. Right? Instead of making it about you yeah. and what you can't do yeah. and all sort of stuff. Yeah. It's like, no, this is the Lord warning me. Yeah. And he's the one who sees everything. So I should probably yeah. listen to him. Absolutely. And so yeah. I think, I think for the person who's not seeking it, mm -hmm. yeah. see it as God's hand of grace mm -hmm. it is. and mercy, reaching out to you, helping you yeah. and guiding you, which is what we pray for, right? Yeah. yeah. Lord, help me. Lord, guide me. That's Lord, what we show say. Me that's what that's, yep. That yeah. it comes so in. It shows up. Um, and I actually, that's a, a perfect segue to the next question that I have, because um, in your case and in your story, you weren't looking for that, but the person like still showed up mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things that we talked about in the lesson that was necessary to receive counsel is um, accountability, right? Um, and so what do you, and I'll let either one of you answer, what do you believe is most people's definition of accountability? <laughs> What is the actual definition of accountability? <laughs> He's laughing because she's not know that word. It's hilarious. What do you believe really most people's definition is, and what do you think the actual definition is of accountability? I don't know what most people think accountability is. <laughs> but I think it's fluid. I, I think <laughs> so I, I know what it's not. I, I got the other half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think time. people think it's fluid. Tell yeah. me more. I think people that. think it's... Uh, we, you, I'll allow you to be accountable for what I feel mm -hmm. like you should be accountable for. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's this yeah. Yeah. picking and choosing. Yes. Like, yes. I'm going to give you some, but yeah. you're not going to get everything, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'll, or I'll, I won't give a full report, but yeah. I'll tell you the good that I did. Mm -hmm. I like, yeah. But I'm not really running to you when I fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or about to fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think is. I don't think it's the real definition. Yeah, of what yeah. Live by. I would, I would just similar. I, I think the the missing piece of accountability is responsibility, mm. because mm -hmm. I feel like people want to be held accountable, but their standard of accountability is still like subpar. Like she yeah. said, like I'll let you in a little bit, or like don't don't completely eliminate what I'm doing. Like yeah. I didn't give you that much access. Yes. But then also there's a responsibility. Like when you are corrected, when you are presented something that you need to shift or change or something that you asked me, you asked me, mm -hmm. okay, example. Yeah. This is not my, but like, okay, you want to eat better, right? Mm -hmm. So one, like it would be nice if you told me what you were eating, <laughs> right? Because I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Tell me everything. But you get know what I'm saying? Like there's a responsibility. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I can't always yes. like, hello, like yes. it's one o'clock, lunchtime. What do you right, eat? Right, 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 right. Like you yeah. know, and some people need that initially. I'm not knocking mm -hmm. people's process, but I think that responsibility piece is missing in a lot of just encounter accountability as a whole. Mm -hmm. I'll just say it. I'll leave it there. 
Because accountability is two ways. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. just like the person that's holding you accountable has to be accountable mm -hmm. um, and responsible for you, like you have to be responsible yeah. to submit. And I think, I think accountability is radical. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. real accountability yeah. yes. <laughs> is radical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't see it and it's yeah. uncomfortable yes. and mm -hmm. you don't really got privacy. Yes. But nope. which do you want? Do you yes. want to be bound? Yes. Or are you trying to make it okay? Yeah, that's, you know? mm -hmm. that's, that's what I was getting to. I was mm -hmm. going to let them be the nice, let y'all get the nice answers to like come <laughs> through with the snack. Because real accountability is not asking for permission. Like, mm. real accountability does not say, is it okay if I, no. Like, we, mm. there's a scripture um, that we read in the lesson, I think it was Luke 19 and 13, that says, mm. if somebody sins, rebuke him. Mm. It doesn't say to ask for permission to rebuke yes. him. It doesn't say wait for the right moment or the right time. Mm. It says rebuke them. And so I think most people's mm. definition of accountability, even when we think about accountability partners, just, yeah. um, it's usually not really that. It's like usually... Nope. Two people are trying to do the same thing, yeah, but we not, we ain't really. Or it right. may be somebody who, like, I may be trying to do, like, may, I may want to eat better, but I'm not really giving you the full, per, the yeah. full scope of. And, it, and once we enter into accountability partners, you you have permission to not have my permission, and I don't think people yes, realize that. The line, like, you don't like so, yeah. once I say, no hold line. me accountable. I'm, I don't yeah, have permission down. anymore. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, it may be offensive, it may be intrusive, yeah. like you said, radical, but at that point, once we're in that type of relationship, I don't have permission to say you've gone too far because yeah. I asked for this. I asked for you to go too right. far. I asked for you to be in my face. I asked for you to See. help me to be better, and I don't think people realize that that mm -hmm. is the definition of accountability. And what yeah. we want people is to check in on us from time to time. We want a checkup, but this is not a checkup, boo. This is a full lifestyle transformation. And I think that can be scary. Yeah, and this can is. either make you not want accountability yeah. or it can make you say, actually, this is exactly what I need. Right. Yeah. And if you have the right person, yeah. obviously, they're going to do it in the right way, right? right? Yeah, like, they're yeah, not yeah. going to be too abrasive. But I remember there was a time when someone who was uh, struggling with watching certain things. I want to be careful because I know it's on YouTube and I don't want this to get flagged. This video take it down because it's good. <laughs> um, but they were watching certain things and they had me sign up with them with this program. It's called um, something I can't even remember, but essentially I could see their browsing history. Mm. I could see what they were watching. Like I, I covenant eyes, that's what it was called. So I could oh, see everything right. that they saw. And so they had to be like, now here's what they could have done. Got on another device. Yeah. And I wouldn't have saw it. But do, yeah. so then you really don't want accountability at that right. point, right? right? And so it wasn't a point where I wanted to be nosy. I didn't want to see. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But in a place where somebody needs that, I had to also be uncomfortable myself mm -hmm. and open myself mm -hmm. up to see their stuff and to pray about it and to really help them through it. And so accountability is a two-way street. It's not easier yeah. no. on one side than it is no. another because you have to avail your time, yes. your energy, your yes. thoughts while you're trying to help you get together. Mm -hmm. You yes. have to like lend yourself to that process. But yeah. I yes. think if the body of Christ really tapped into accountability, mm -hmm. um, we would see so, so much, much change. Mm -hmm. And we would, and it takes vulnerability. It takes yeah. honesty. It takes yeah. so many things. But mm -hmm. the, the outcome is greater than the input, right? Yes. Like what you get is so much greater than what you put into it. Um, I don't know if you have yeah, because one one of the words that stood out to me in the definition you said responsibility, I saw um, obligation. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I am I am yes. obligated mm -hmm. to push you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like and I don't think we have that. Yes. Like I mm -hmm. think I think we're more concerned with uh, pacifying and, and mm -hmm. supporting yes. and mm -hmm. and rubbing and like excusing people like yes. no we all fall it's okay yeah, yeah. We're, we're more comfortable with that than to say no that's actually not right yeah like let like how can we do better yeah what's the next step yeah and so I, I pray like my prayer is that we would feel obligated yeah. to hold somebody's hand the scripture says that when you are converted now turn mm -hmm. around and strengthen your brother. Yeah, yeah. Like we're obligated yeah. to strengthen one another, yeah. mm -hmm. and we can't for, we can't forget that, and we can't allow our desire to be liked mm -hmm. or yeah. the risk to offend the, somebody mm -hmm. yeah. stand mm -hmm. in the way of their freedom. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Like if you uh, mm -hmm. and Pastor says this, Apostle says this all the time. Like if a child is running into the middle of yes. the street, mm -hmm. you're not whispering and being yes. cute and like, yeah. oh, 
don't go that way. Yeah. No, you are screaming to mm-hmm. get their attention. No, come back yeah. and don't do it again. Mm-hmm. Right? Like so I think that urgency yeah. and the 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 right mm-hmm. to step into yes. somebody's life yes. and yeah. to help them to go the next direction. Yeah. I'll feel that's where people will be discipled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Mm-hmm. That's and I think too, like I think the other side of that is for people who may not struggle with the pacifying thing, because mm-hmm. um, I don't, I'm gonna tell you like it is. Um, <laughs> I think we like should be encouraged by like what you just said mm-hmm. and like understanding like it is hard and people may not book another session with you or mm-hmm. they may not keep, they may not ask you anymore, yeah. but it's like, okay, well, I think that's mm-hmm. why conversations like this are so important. So if they go to Minister Kelly and mm-hmm. they know that she's not gonna pacify her, they don't come to me and think I'm gonna do yeah. it. And then they don't go, you yeah. know what I mean? Hopping from person to person. Mm-hmm. But if there's one fluent message, I think that's I think that's super important. And I think about Jesus how like when mm-hmm. the Pharisees would be me and Pharisees, he'd be like, What y'all saying in your hearts? Like he yes. already knew. Yeah. And, he yeah. and he did he and he he never mm. paused, he never stopped, and he still did what he had to do. Um it still was invited or uninvited to those spaces, however you want to look at it. He was still right. he was still in the place. Yeah. Um, and so he just kept showing up and kept doing the work, and I think that's what we have an obligation to do. And it can be discouraging to say, man, people don't like what I'm saying, but yeah. if it's the word of God, it's the truth of God, we have an obligation, like you said, mm-hmm. to keep moving in that um, and keep going forward with mm. that. So get mm-hmm. y'all some accountability, okay? Get some real accountability, because mm-hmm. it'll save your life. And so let's go to the next question, um, and anybody can answer this. Uh, the lesson discussed submission as necessary for counsel. Do you think believers struggle with submission to people, to God, to whomever? Why or why not? I definitely think there's a struggle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it. Um, I mean, there's. I think there's a range of, of things, uh, possibilities that could be in the way. But I think a lot of it has to do with, poss- I'm, I'm going to take a stab. Mm-hmm. It may have to do with our theology. Mm-hmm. Um, it may have to do with the fact that we, we're we not really acquainted with the nature of God mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. So we're still kind of struggling with yeah. this trust. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And we struggle with things like embarrassment. I remember when the Lord mm-hmm. gave me a revelation on embarrassment. He was like, if you're embarrassed, then that means that you esteem somebody over me. Mm, mm-hmm. mm. Like, wh- why would you come to me and be wide open mm-hmm. and be able to talk about everything, mm-hmm. but then go to a person and then feel embarrassed? So mm-hmm. that that means that you something in you mm-hmm. is esteeming yeah. that person yeah. over yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Like, what is embarrassment? Like, mm-hmm. what is that? Like, who? Is, I was say. I'm not gonna go ahead. But yeah, <laughs> so I think I think that that's something that we should consider yeah. in our struggling uh, who God is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what what does He think toward us. Yeah. And once you get that revelation, it's like okay, now I can open myself up to trust, and I can open myself up to trust His people. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Who yes are flawed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but sincere, mm-hmm. and they are pressing toward the mark yeah. every day, mm-hmm. right? Um, and as you yield, lend grace, there's grace being given to you. Yes. Like all the time, like there's mm-hmm. this exchange of grace, and we all grow stronger for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that the things that are standing in the way um, would help with Bible study and just other spiritual disciplines. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely love that. I'm going to give the next question to you, Brianna. Mm-hmm. What are some potential dangers of relying too heavily on human counsel mm-hmm. without considering God's guidance? Like what I used to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, I think, of course, the most obvious answer is it's very easy to make other gods mm-hmm. um, little G's um, and idols out of people. Um, everyone has an opinion nowadays. Everyone mm-hmm. has something to say nowadays. But if yeah. you esteem um, the opinion and advice of over other people, you're essentially saying that God's word is not enough. Mm-hmm. Um, so the detriment of it is one, you'll never get a, a stable answer. Like mm-hmm. every person you go to, if they're not rooted in the word of God, you're going to get fluctuating thoughts mm-hmm. and opinions. It may yeah. change on the day, it may change on their mood. Like mm-hmm. you'll never be solid and, and flat footed on anything yeah. that you go to them with. Um, 
because it's always going to change, right? His right. word is the only thing that doesn't change. So I think the detriment um, for people, one, is they will not be stable. Mm -hmm. um, and then two, like as a body, we're all, like there's one head and we're mm -hmm. the body, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, if you're only listening to everything else and you're not relying on the head, then your your whole theology, everything that you think is going to be off. I don't know how to yeah. say it in a, mm -hmm. a professional no, yeah, no, that's way. Good. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I, there's no security in that. And yeah. there are people that have given me great advice. They mm -hmm. mean well, right? But if I can't trace it back, if it's, you know, if I go to you the next day and it's it's not the same thing, then it's unreliable, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important just as believers to, to mm -hmm. stay rooted. And I think we should seek wise counsel. I don't know if, so I don't, I don't know how much we really seek wise counsel if we're um, aware of the counselors we have, mm -hmm. really. Um, I don't know if as a discipline the body has considered, because I know there are a lot of people that work in counseling. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people, and again, I'm not saying that they don't know what they're talking about, but mm -hmm. I think just in the structure of the body, um, if you don't rely on the word of God, if you don't come back to the truth of what God's word is always, then to me that's just unstable and unreliable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Repeat the question one more time because I feel like I have something else to say. <laughs> um, what are some, no, I think you got it. What are some oh. potential dangers of relying too heavily on human counsel without considering oh, no. God's guidance? Okay. I yeah, I was, I'm, I'm, I would echo that. Like I think, too, we, we have the tendency, like Brianna said, to create idols. Um, but then I think we miss the fellowship and the beauty that we find mm. in seeking like yeah. God's word and his voice. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember the first times, like when I was a teenager, when I first like knew that I was hearing God's voice and mm -hmm. it, was, it was like, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And it checked with the word of God. And so I think you just miss being counseled by, yeah. and I talked about this in the lesson at the end, like the wonderful counselor, like you miss the beauty of like his voice. And of course, like he puts his answers in people yes. and all yeah. of those things, like we'll never discount that. But yeah. there's something that's truly amazing uh, that of being counseled by the wonderful counselor, you know, yes. um, right. and building that relationship. With and him. I also think that counsel also like it does increase your intimacy with God yes. because something about what Absolutely. someone says, it's like, oh, I want to go read more mm -hmm. about that. Like, oh, I want to go see. Mm -hmm. Oh, then this leads to this. And yes. this, oh, Jesus, I didn't know you did this. Yes. And it like opens up this like just world of yeah. just knowledge and understanding yeah. and beauty, like you said. So I yeah. think um, when counsel is done correctly, quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, it always just leads you back to Jesus and from there, you know, he can do yeah. amazing things. So yeah. that was it. Do you have anything with that? No, I was, I was, um, as I was preparing for this, I, I thought about how I've grown in mm -hmm. just counsel over, mm -hmm. over the years mm -hmm. and how I am at the point where I can receive the full counsel of God, mm -hmm. like not like directly from him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where I don't, I don't block him from speaking yes. mm -hmm. certain things to me. Mm -hmm. um, when the Bible talks about, you know, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, like that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if there's something, mm -hmm. like I did with that person, yeah. if yes. there's something yeah. that I know is being said and I mm -hmm. know I need to check, I can easily block that out. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful, it's it's the journey that I've been on mm -hmm. yeah. has been really sweet mm -hmm. I because I. I've been leaning in more yeah. to him. There's been more intimacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I almost mm -hmm. yearn for his voice mm -hmm. more yeah. now that I do like mm -hmm. someone else's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's the first person that yeah. I tend to check in yeah. with now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think that's the good, that's a great place mm -hmm. for us to get mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Especially when he could give you the fullness, when he can show yes. you everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, he doesn't have to like spoon feed us and yeah. he doesn't mm -hmm. have to give us milk. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think you could take this meat. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, this is the full picture, and so yeah. this is what we're trying to get to, baby. Yeah. And so I, I love it. I love yes, that. Yes. So I have one more question. That's actually, I didn't send this to y'all because I just thought of it. Okay. Um, but it's going to be our, our conclusion question. What yeah. is in, if you want to say your story is, that's fine. The story you told us already. Um, what is counsel that has saved your life? Tell us about a time that counsel saved your life. Mm. If you want to, you know go back on your story, Ew, that's okay. My um, or that kept you, like counsel that you like, like you never forgot, like, oh, yeah. like I, like, oh. Oh yeah. Okay, I remember I one. That. I'll go to the same story. Oh, well, no. So, what I knew was the first red flag. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. 
the person who spoke to me was the second mm. form of counsel. Mm -hmm. The third form of counsel was himself. Mm -hmm. How he kept showing up in my life. Mm. And he kept showing up in ways that I didn't think he should show up in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He kept meeting me at unholy places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as if to say, I'm not done with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not letting you go easy. Mm -hmm. And you belong to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to chase you until you relent. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, it, I, it was that pursuit of, of him telling me, like in the midnight hour, you're more than this, mm. you're better than this, you're stronger than this, mm -hmm. you're capable, you're all this, because I was feeling less than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and even though I knew what to do, I had been in a situation so long, I, have become, I became discouraged that I could mm. get out. Yeah. Um, and so his counsel that would come to me at random time literally saved my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know, um, I don't know how that would have ended if God didn't continuously visit me and speak yeah. to me yeah. and build me up until I could make a different decision. Mm -hmm. What's that? All right, this is kind of deep. Oh, wow. But the first thing that came to my mind, so I'm just going to go with it because mm -hmm. I guess that's Holy Spirit, um, was I remember the day that I wanted to end my life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was, a, it was a thought. And I think that's the one of the first times that I realized how the enemy how his voice can sneak in mm -hmm. and like kind of convince you, right? Because back then it was just a really rough year um, and I kind of was back to that. I wasn't really in the church, but mm -hmm. you know, so I remember um, I was on the phone with somebody who is not biblically sound and I told them, I was like, I think I want to, and I was really serious. I think I want to end my life. Mm -hmm. Like, and they, I'll never forget their chuckle. Like they, like, like what? Like mm -hmm. almost as if it was like a, a joke. Mm -hmm. And I don't like, I literally felt so small and mm -hmm. unneed, like it just fed into the situation, right? So then I um, ended up calling or telling someone and something like that usually you're not that vulnerable with because it's mm -hmm. like kind of embarrassing. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? You know, yeah. depending on who you're talking to. Yeah. Um, and I called and I remember that counsel that um, one of my close friends gave me, like they were just throwing scripture. They were saying mm. what God said. They were like, no, the enemy's a liar. Because back then, I don't, you know, you're not in church, you're not grounded <laughs> yeah, in the truth. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. easy yeah. to just believe anything. So I remember that day. And while it was still hard, like, I don't think, I don't know how my life would have turned out if mm. I didn't seek that truth. Mm -hmm. Like, if they didn't, like, reaffirm me and just tell me what God said. Yeah. And that what mm. I feel may be real in the moment, yeah. but this is what God said. Like, yeah. I need you to believe that that's a lie. Mm -hmm. um, if not, you know, that laugh and that chuckle while mm. I don't think it was like a ha ha foolish yeah, yeah. thing, I don't know yeah. where I would be if it wasn't for that. So that's one instance literally counsel saved my life. Wow, mm. literally. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You asked, I'm sorry. <laughs> this was your idea. That was so good. You're not gonna answer? Oh, I don't want to after that one. That was deep. That was deep. That was deep. That was this question. Uh, uh -huh. So my answer is, so um, a few years ago, I was dealing with a health diagnosis. And in my quest to yeah. be content, mm -hmm. um, it was a lie. I wasn't. Um, yeah. I was like, oh, this is like, maybe this is what God wants for me. Like, this is, you know, this is, I'm okay. Yeah. Crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crying, crying. Yeah. Um, and it was my apostle. He was like, no, I don't see that for you. Yeah. Um, and I remember that being like, first I was just like, whew, like I was like, mm. okay, that like, yeah, okay, okay, so this was fake contentment. Okay, yeah. I repent because that was a lie, God. Mm -hmm. um, but also just like someone seeing more mm -hmm. and like almost giving me permission to, to want not that? to yeah. want and to and to not yeah. like have this pseudo Christianity and like like pretend like you're Settle. okay with something that mm -hmm. you're not. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't as much about the thing as yeah. much mm -hmm. as it was about being a person and mm -hmm. being real and mm -hmm. being like, no, this is what you desire. What you this is what the Lord put in, on your heart. This is what's for your life. And you don't have to pretend to be okay to like, like God will still love you if you're not Let's okay with this. Let's be people. Yeah. Like, Let's be people yeah. that go through. Yeah. <laughs> Trust God. Yeah. Right? Like the, the, wow. the first answer for me was this feigned like contentment. And he just gave me permission to like not be okay with it, but also like be okay with not yeah. being okay with it. Yeah. Um, of course, not to stay there, but to just be honest yes. and transparent yes. and real. Yes. Um, and so I think about that often when I 
am trying to pretend like I'm content mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. other things in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm like, am I like really content yeah. with this mm -hmm. or am I playing? Mm -hmm. um, and so that one thing I like take with me like almost every day of my life I think about that. So, so that's it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have talked about a lot. Uh, so I pray oh. this conversation was helpful. I mean, if it wasn't, just keep watching it because we talked about so many different <laughs> things. It's like go to the God for counsel. <laughs> 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 if we didn't do it, then honey, I don't know. You yeah. might need some deliverance. Um, no, we love y'all. And we pray, seriously, that this conversation was helpful. Um, and the next time you seek counsel, I hope you think of this conversation and see yourself in it. And you're able really to apply the word of God to your life. And so we love y'all. Uh, thank you for being with us. And we will see you next week.